All right. Welcome, everybody. It's so great to see a lot of you after having spent plenty of time with you last week at OEN Engage. So welcome back. Good to see you. I hope you had a nice weekend. Um, very excited to share about the Colleague Connector program today. But before we get started with this program being all about connecting our colleagues to one another, I encourage anyone in attendance to um, drop your name and your institution in the chat to just introduce yourself, maybe say where you're Zooming in from today so that we can get to know one another and see who's here. My name is Barb. I'm the Director of Community Engagement at the OEN. And um, I think the secret is out. One of my absolute favorite programs that we run is the Colleague Connector Program. So I'm excited to have you all here today to hear from our awesome panel of past program participants. Uh, to give just a quick rundown of the program, which I'm sure you've had a little bit of versing in this, uh, if you made your way to this session. Um, but the Colleague Connector program is where you fill out a short application that I will share right now, actually, in the chat, in case anyone has to dip out early. I'll also be sharing this at the end of today's session. Um, but you fill out this short application um, and we then use your application to pair you with another member or two, you can choose your preference, of the community as an opportunity to get to build a relationship with somebody else at a different institution, maybe within a similar or a different context um, than your open education context, so that you've got just someone to bounce ideas around with. Um, kind of bring that humanity into the work you're doing. If you're the only person doing open education work at your institution, this is hopefully having someone else to feel that solidarity. You're in this together. You're not alone um, and all that great stuff. So uh, the way the program works is you fill out this application by August 4th that I just dropped in the chat. We do the pairing process. We have some volunteer past part participants who help us match folks. And then we have a kickoff event with the whole group of participants in September. Um, and then from September through May, I will send you monthly emails with conversation prompts to be a tool for you to use if you want to, uh, to help spark conversation with you and your partner. And you and your partner or partners are encouraged to meet monthly. And that's something that you organize on your own time around your own schedules. Um, we have a mid-semester December larger group celebration. And then at the end of the program, we have uh, an end of year celebration with everybody to kind of reflect on our experience together and, and talk about how things went and what that looked like. So that is the gist of the program. Um, I am now going to kind of turn it over to our awesome panelists today. We're going to, um, they're gonna share a little bit at the beginning uh, with some questions that we've got put together for them. And then we'll have about 10 minutes at the end for you to ask questions. Uh, I'm unmute. We're a small group here. Uh, do feel free to drop questions in the chat along the way, and we'll try to integrate that into the conversation as well. So with that, I will have our awesome panelists go ahead and introduce themselves to get us started. Marissa. Hello, uh, my name is Marissa Petrich. I'm the Instructional Design Librarian at the University of Washington Tacoma, and I use she and her pronouns. Hi, my name is Amanda Gray. I'm the Open Education Strategist at Kualan Polytechnic University, uh, located on the unceded traditional and ancestral lands of the Kualan, Musqueam, uh, Semiamu, Coquitlam, Kutsi, Tawasing, and Kikite peoples. Um, My name is Jennifer Jordan, and I am the OER librarian and an assistant professor at the University of New Mexico. My name is Regina Seguin, and I am the open education librarian at Excelsior University. Afternoon, everyone. My name is Lisa Pillow, and I'm the collection strategy and development librarian at Carleton College. Awesome. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves, panelists. Um, so we're also, I forgot to mention, um, we have kind of a mix of folks here. So we have a pair that was a group of three. Two of them are here to speak. We have a pair that was a group of two. And then we have Lisa, who's here to just talk about her experience with her partners 
as well. So Amanda and Marissa were part of the same matching and then Jennifer and Regina were as well. So a little context before we move into the conversation. Okay, so to kick it off, um, we've got this slide here. Um, there's a lot happening on this slide, but hopefully this visual is helpful. Um, we're gonna start by each of these panelists chose a GIF to represent their experience in the program. And so each of them is gonna explain their GIF, describe it, and then explain why they chose it as a representation of their experience. Again, we'll start with you, Marissa. Got to find that mute button. Um, all right. Hello again. My GIF is in the lower left hand corner. It is two people from the Great Brit British Bake Off, a contestant and a host, and they are um, doing a little penguin dance by shimmying their shoulders at a baking station. If you watch or don't watch the Great British British Bake Off, um, there's a lot of like really wholesome hard work going on in the tent where they're in a baking competition and they love what they're doing, but it can be a little stressful. It's kind of high stakes. They really want to do well. And then there are hosts that wander around and make jokes and distract the contestants and bother them and generally cause mischief of all kinds. Uh, so I chose this gift because we um, were not always 100% on task, but I do think we were always having a lot of fun. So for me, this program kind of helped take that um, work that I really cared about and bring a little levity to it. Uh, so my GIF is right above that in the top left. It's of two people hugging in commiseration. And then as they part, one of them gives the other a thumbs up. Um, and I I chose this GIF because I think our group, we were able to share a lot of what we were struggling with and things we were kind of going through or projects that had come to a halt or even in some cases, some political uh, things that were getting in the way and very frustrating. So it was really a space where we felt free to share what we were struggling with, uh, as I said, commiserate with each other, and then at the very end, give each other a little thumbs up, keep going, we're doing good. So I chose the GIF at the bottom right-hand corner, and it is um, from an SNL skit. And there's Drew Barrymore, um, and she is talking to Candace Bergen. And she, Drew is telling Candace that she's crushing it. You're crushing it. And so I chose this gift to represent my experience in the program because it kind of reflects how it was a space for me and my partner to just kind of validate each other and um, help move each other along and show each other that, you know, we're doing a good job. So that's why I picked out one. Um, I'm Regina. I chose the GIF in the center, um, which is quite literal. Um, it's a, a hand showing a permission slip that says you are allowed to take time to pause and breathe. And I chose this because for two reasons, really. Um, first, meeting with my partner was sort of taking that time to pause and breathe um, just in the midst of the busyness of work, um, just to take a time out and talk about things. And then the second part of it is that I felt like this was sort of a permission slip that we often gave each other during our, um, you know, during our conversations, like, Hey, it's okay to set a boundary. It's okay to um, stop and reflect on that. Um, so that was, that was mine. Um, so um, I chose my GIF is the one on the top right corner, and it is the final shot from um, the Breakfast Club. Um, and it shows the character John Bender walking towards the camera um, across the football field, and he kind of raises and pumps his fist in the air. Um, so I chose this because I thought it pretty much embodied how I felt um, after going through the program. Um, I was in a group of three. We kind of, we weren't there for detention. We were, you know, there to um, learn from each other, but kind of, you know, 
three different people, three different personalities, different experiences with OER, um, spending time together um, and sharing the ups and downs and triumphs um, of what we were trying to do. And then just kind of the end, I think it kind of shows how I feel is going into this, not knowing what to expect, a little confused and feeling much more confident after being in the program. Wonderful, thank you. And Lisa, I'm glad you were participating of your own will and not because you received a detention. Right. <laughs> Thank you. And I got such joy. Um, I was telling the panelists um, when they were sending me the ones that they chose, because I think these are all things that we've heard from other participants in past cohorts as well. And I'm just glad to hear that the program continues to um, bring such great things to our participants. So with that, we've got a um, uh, couple of questions here before we open it up to any you all might have. Um, so to begin with Lisa, um, and then anyone else who wants to chime in, what was your motivation for joining the program? You mentioned maybe being a little unsure going into it. Um, yeah, well, I, I'm not, we don't have a, like, I, it's not part of my title. We haven't really, um, here at my institution, defined who would be doing what, but there were a small group of us in the library that felt that it was imperative um, that we start um, getting involved in open education. Um, so with that being said, as many of us know, you attend a lot of webinars, you read a lot of things and it's a lot of information and it can be very overwhelming. Um, so when the opportunity came up for the Colleague Connector program, I thought this would be perfect because I would be paired with one or two other colleagues um, at other institutions and I would be able to like kind of share, yes, it's a little scary here, um, just jumping into it, but also learning from others. And it was an opportunity to have um, like a sustained informal connection with others. Um, I think sometimes on when you're attending webinars, it kind of feels very formal and you're not, at least for me, not certain about asking a question or is this going to come off as naive? So um, that's why I decided to do the Colleague Connector program. Thanks, Lisa. Anyone else and or Regina, I might um, ask you specifically, I know there were a number of your coworkers at Excelsior who had moved through the program. Did that have any bearing on you choosing to participate and maybe why? Um, so at Excelsior, our entire library department was brand new last year. So yes, I went through the program and a colleague of mine also went through the program at the same time um, this past year. Um, so it was something that we talked about that we, we both, um, you know, I think one of us shared it with the other and said, hey, don't you think this would be fun to do? And, you know, we both, we both kind of stepped up and wanted to participate in that. Um, and, you know, for me, this is my first um, position that is specifically open education. And one of the things that, you know, when you start to um, engage in open education conferences and, um, you know, the listservs, what, I feel like the first thing I was hearing is all about the community, the community, the community, community. And I was like, this is a great way to get to know at least one other person in that community, right? Just to start um, getting to know individual people um, and not just names kind of on a screen. Awesome, thank you. All right, our next question, I'm also gonna um, direct at Regina and her partner, Jennifer. What has been the most beneficial aspect of connecting with your partner? I'll jump in first, Jennifer. Um, so, you know, there are so many benefits. Um, I, and I shared a little bit of this with my GIF as well. I really felt like this was a great space for um, reflection. And also, I mean, sometimes to be able to bring something to Jennifer and, you know, and maybe get her advice on it, um, sometimes her validation. Um, but 
oftentimes just hearing myself explain what's going on helped bring clarity to whatever the thing was that was happening um, during that, you know, that particular month. So that was, that was something that was uh, nice for me. And I think also, you know, thinking about the time that we spent, um, it was kind of like a timeout. Um, it was the one meeting that I had where there wasn't a particular action item associated with it. There wasn't something that I, it was like a low pressure kind of situation. You know, you could go in and just talk about what's happening, talk about your day and kind of commiserate. So, um, that was a big benefit for me. I'll turn it over to Jennifer. Yeah. So I started, um, as a new OER librarian in 2022. And I had done OER at my previous college, but it was never my full-time job. So moving over to this new um, university, um, I really wanted to learn about things that people were doing on other campuses. Um, I was actually the first OER librarian in the state of New Mexico. And so now we have another. <laughs> There's one other, um, but we're we're working on building up our um, our OER connections here. Um, so my job is pretty stressful. Um, I'm often kind of I feel like I'm flying by the seat of my pants a lot of times, um, and so the meetings help to kind of ground me. It's like okay, here I am. It's been a month since I saw Regina, and now <laughs> we can decompress and talk about what's going on. Um, and so that was super helpful too. I mean, it was almost like a good sort of timekeeper, um, but then also getting to like bounce ideas off of Regina. So my background, even though I'm a, an OER librarian, I actually started off in the open education space as a teacher and I was an English teacher. So I really valued being able to ask Regina questions about librarianship. Um, that was really, really super helpful. Um, also validating too, because of the whole imposter syndrome, like, am I a librarian? I don't know if I am. And then Regina would be like, you are a librarian. Um, so that was super helpful. Um, and also I liked that it was a meeting I could go to where I didn't have to like perform anything or bring stuff. Um, so that was super nice too. So it at times was a live reenactment of the GIF. You're crushing it. You are a librarian. <laughs> Any other um, panelists would you like to share beneficial aspects, the most beneficial aspect of connecting with your partner or partners? Um, I'd just like to add, I know with, with my group, um, the, the program ended for us, um, but we've continued to meet monthly. Um, we really enjoy each other's company, but also found a lot of support with each other. And we just decided to continue on our, our monthly meetings. So um, I, I now have two additional colleagues um, that I didn't have before, and we're continuing um, to help each other out. I think the other great benefit is in my group of three, we had... Um, one of the participants was from is in based in the UK. So it was really interesting to hear kind of um, a different perspective of open education um, outside of the US. Yeah, I'll I'll add to that as well, because we had uh, very similar things in our group as well. So yes, we are also continuing to meet, um, uh, which we're very, very much looking forward to. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll reiterate what everybody has said. Yes, excellent to have a meeting where I don't have to prepare. I can just show up and exist and not have to worry about uh, being prepared or coming off a certain way or a, needing a strategy to like push something forward. I could just show up and be myself. Um, and then also, yeah, we were all coming from very different context uh, and different with different levels of uh, university or institutional support, uh, different political context, 
uh, different stages at where we are at in our OER journey at this institution. So it was really good to hear from different perspectives of what other people are going through, what other people are having to deal with. Um, made me appreciate what I have, um, but also recognize that some of these problems are universal. They're happening everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. And yeah, that's always just helpful. While while you wish everyone had the funding they needed, it's also kind of like consoling to a degree to know that you're not the only one struggling with that and maybe have others you can ideate with or just feel that solidarity. Um, and I did want to make a shout out. Yes, we, this was the first year that we had an international cohort. We had Canadians, we had folks from the UK and a participant from Australia as well. So that's a fun, if that's something you're interested in, I used to work in international education, so that would have been me being like, yes, there is a question on the application where um, it asks, are you interested in being paired with somebody who's from a different country than you? So if that piques your interest, there's an option for that. If that's something where you're like, mm, I'm really hoping for my own context and uh, for whatever reason, um, you can opt out of that. Um, the Which I always highly encourage people for that um, exchange. Um so next question, I'm going to hand this over to Marissa and Amanda as the first ones to answer. What surprised you most about participating in the program? I can take it first. Um, so I had come in really kind of looking for a meeting to bring things to because I'm the only person at my institution who does anything with OER. And in many cases, I'm kind of the only person who cares and it's only part of my job. So it's really, really, really easy for me to back burner those things because no one ever says, hey, Marissa, did you do the OER things? You know, the people that want me to, you know, follow up on those action items and keep things moving are all interested in other projects. So I came in really looking for like a highly productive space that would help me stay accountable to my own deadlines. And what surprised me is that it was actually a lot more fun. Uh, than that. Uh, and I also really enjoyed being in a group of three. So if you're expecting a pair and they're like, hey, is a group of three okay? I would highly recommend it. I think that was awesome. Uh, yeah, the, the group of three was good because then if one person couldn't make it, we could still meet. Uh, or if someone was running late, we could still you know, be a group and meet together and have that time. So it was, it was really good. And there, it also took a bit of the pressure off um when we're meeting and talking if if two people are talking and I can kind of just like sit back if I'm not feeling super engaged or I'm like mine's wandering somewhere it, it relieves that bit of bit of pressure um what surprised me the most is how good I felt after each meeting um even meetings where I didn't have anything particular to get off my chest or any particular struggles even if everything was fine um and I had nothing to share I still felt great after every meeting. Um, it was it was really good. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, much like the international um, partner, um, there is a thing you can tick, like, are you open to being in a group of three or two or either? And it doesn't matter. Um, so thank you both for sharing that and walking away feeling good and being surprised by fun. Those are two really exciting things that I wish happened more in the workday. Anybody else want to share um, something that surprised you about participating? Um, I'll jump in and say that one thing that surprised me was the different ways that, um, that Jennifer and I were um, connected. Um, so we both have a similar background. We both came from community colleges. And for both of us, that's not our current position anymore, but we were, that was something that obviously was, you know, taken into account, I think, when we were matched up. And it was really cool because, you know, we had sort of this point of similarity that we were able to kind of, um, uh, you know, connect on. So that was sort of a, a neat thing. Um, just, I think, in general, coming into the program, um, it's, it's kind of fun to see who you get matched up with and, you know, the different things that you might have in common and the different ways um, that you can help each other that you might not have even expected. Yeah, I thought it was pretty fascinating how 
the different colleges that we had worked at, how they were similar in different ways, and even my old community college, how like some maybe administrative practices were similar to Excelsior, um, which I just thought was really interesting to learn about how a private college um, was run versus the public. I thought that was like super informative too. Like you learn what you might not expect to learn. Yeah, and I've heard past participants share how like they thought that they would really want to be with people that had very similar context to them, but then at the end were glad that there was someone with complimentary because it was like a fresh take on idea like ways they had approached their administration that they had never thought of within their context that they then experimented with. So um I appreciate your answer and kind of pointing out the unexpected and um I think that's a good tenet of the program is just being open to being surprised or open to like getting things out of it that you're not necessarily expecting. Um, also, before we go to the last question, I want to also thank you too for kind of highlighting the pairing and like appreciating how you were paired. That is, uh, you know, we have great volunteers that help us with that process who were a part of the program, but it's also really kind of a testament to the time that each applicant puts into their application. Like face value, the application is pretty straightforward. Like there aren't that many questions, but if you're interested in participating, the more thought you can put into your answers, the more context we have to then pair you really well or as well, as best we can with somebody with um, similar goals, interests, or complementary goals, interests, context, et cetera. So just a plug to you or anyone you know who's applying to really, um, it's a simple application, but thoughtfulness really um, goes a long way in terms of, of pairing. Um. Okay, so the last question before we open it up to anyone here who's got a question, what would you say to people who are considering participating in the program in the future? We'll start with Regina, but if any everyone wants to share something, if you've got it, no pressure if you don't, but um, we'll kind of just do a little round robin with this and then move into the Q&A. So what would you say to people who are considering participating? Um. This may seem like maybe more simple than you're expecting, but I would say try it. I, you know, especially if this is a profession that has a lot of introverts. I suspect I'm talking to a lot of introverts in this group. Um, I'm one. Um, and, you know, even if you feel like you're somebody that sort of has a hard time connecting with people or, you know, what have you, um, it's worth it. It's, it really is kind of, um, or, or at least in my experience, you know, it was, it was a good breath of fresh air and, and it was fun. Um, so, you know, if you're on the fence about it, I would say um, definitely give it a try. Um, the other thing goes back to what Barb was just saying about the application, um, you know, put in, put in some detail on the, and be thoughtful about, um, you know, what you might want to get out of the program, but then at the same time, you know, be open to, different possibilities so I can um, add a little bit I, I think a lot of us are in a situation at our institutions where most often we're the only one doing what we do or we have very few people that we can talk to about what we're doing I know in my contacts like my manager and my colleagues are all very supportive of what I do but it's very rare that they're able to offer me like critical feedback because I'm the expert in open ed. So they trust that my decisions are what's best. And I love that and appreciate that. Um, but it, it it's nice to have someone else who kind of is coming from the same perspective and knows as much as you do about open ed, or maybe they're still learning, but they still might be able to point out things that um, my everyday colleagues aren't able to. So yeah, to reiterate, um, most of us are working alone <laughs> in what we do. Uh, and it's it's really important to have people that we can talk to about and process um, these things with. For me, it was helpful to connect um, with other folks. We, we would meet also um, as a larger group. And I thought those meetings were helpful to just to see what other people are doing in other parts of the country. And like New Mexico is a big, huge state. We're like the fifth largest land mass state, but I mean, we're still small. Um, and we have a lot of like 
I don't know. It's it's just helpful to see in other places because our OER initiatives are so new. I guess my only word of advice is if you're um, considering do it to do it, just do it. Um, I think sometimes there's some trepidation of like, well, what can I bring to the conversation? Because I, I don't have a lot of experience or that type of thing. Um, I mean, just go ahead and do it. And I would just kind of um, follow up on what others said is when you're filling out the application, um, you can just be honest. I really don't know what I'm doing or I have a, a bit of idea of what I'm doing. And it's and when they pair you up, there's there's really no judgment um in in your group uh because you know if there was why would you be in the program right why would you even apply so um just do it that's all i would add i think my biggest thing to say would be to add to regina's comment about being open being flexible i mean yes do think about what you want to get out of the program but also remember that this, I, I think it sounds like most of us, the thing we valued most was kind of building those social relationships and having a low stakes space to get to know people. So if you're curious about the people around you and like interested in kind of sharing and building a community, you'll get something out of it, even if it's not necessarily a very firm, solid goal oriented plan that you had going in. Awesome. Thank you all so much for those thoughtful responses. I'm kind of sitting over here. It's interesting with this being the third cohort, like hearing echoes of what other people have said, um, that like lack of necessary outcomes, but at the same time, like who knows what can come of it. I know one year we had two folks matched from two different big 10 schools and they went on to start like a big 10 open education group that just met regularly kind of in colleague connector style so that that idea of openness um and kind of like you know see where this path leads is kind of a fun aspect of this program yes thank you amanda um this is a controversial comment actually i do provide discussion questions monthly no the prompts are controversial Everyone, it's funny when we have our group meetings, there's always people like, Barbara, I'm so sorry. We have not used your discussion prompts. And I'm like, that's okay. They're more of a security blanket than anything. Um, but yeah, monthly, like the first work day of the month, I usually send conversation prompts that have two sets of questions. If anyone was at our Colleague Connector Live last week at OEN Engage, we kind of explained that. There's some more like philosophical questions around like, why do we do the work that we do? Which I think can be fun to like step back and think about. And then there's like the questions that are always very, you know, easier to dig right into in terms of like the how, how do we do the open education work that we do on our campuses? So it's also kind of a prompt to like, you know, maybe take it from a couple different angles. So it's definitely a security blanket that's there if you need it and no judgment at all in this program and no judgment for me if nobody uses my conversation prompts either. Um, one more thing I wanted to um, kind of touch on that was expressed here, um, the like, no matter who you are, you are welcome to be a part of this program and you add value like this. We when we were first talking about building this program, we had kind of played around with the idea of like, do we want it to be a mentorship thing or do we want it to be a flat, you know, no power dynamic or experience difference dynamic program. And we intentionally went with this just relationship building, um, knowing that like, no matter who you are, if you're just starting out in open ed, you bring a ton to the table too. So again, thinking about what you want to get out of the program and also knowing that you have a lot to, to give and share as a participant as well as is always exciting. So, um, yeah, with that, I think we will just open it up to any other closing comments, I guess, from our panelists, and then we'll open it up to questions or just thumbs up. All right, questions from anyone here, feel free to unmute and ask or drop them in the chat. I, I was gonna, sorry, my unmute wasn't working. I was just gonna close and say like, at the very least it's one meeting a month. <laughs> like if you're not sure, and but you're kind of interested, like it's, it's one meeting a month. <laughs> 
So it's it's not a huge commitment. <laughs> Exactly. And we kind of, um, the group meetings that we talked about, there's three of them, beginning, middle, and end. Middle and end are pretty like optional. We do highly encourage folks to come to that first meeting because it also is kind of the expectation setting. Like we set norms for the group, norms for communication. We have our pairs then talk about it so that everyone's kind of on the same page and have those norms to point back to if anything comes up within the dynamic of the partnership. Um, and uh, kind of to Amanda's point, we encourage you to figure out amongst yourselves and communicate openly and be open to receiving input and feedback. If you're feeling really stressed, like just communicate that to your partner for a month and hold off and don't meet that month. So just to Amanda's point, thank you for saying that um, you meet on your own time and no judgment if you're feeling busy. Um, that's just something that you, you work out with your partner. And we kind of set the tone at the beginning of the program to facilitate that open, um, openness to one another and our needs. Any other questions? All right. Well, I'm going to start talking. Feel free to just drop something in the chat or unmute and interrupt me if you do have a question and I didn't leave enough silence time. Um, thanks Abby for the comment. Just a reminder, the application is due August 4th. You've got a nice little buffer weekend before that due date. If you don't have time to get to it this week, I'll drop that in the chat once again. I did also um, drop a link in the chat to an old blog post that we did on the program, If in case you want to share that with anyone who wasn't able to make it today um, or who knows what. Um, feel free to share this application link with any of your colleagues as well. Um, if you have someone on your campus that you think might be interested in, in it as well that you don't think has come across our announcements yet. Um, just another encouragement to put some thought into those answers and just, um, yeah, I think as a community, this is what we're all about. And Regina kind of, I think it was Regina or maybe it was Marissa, someone mentioned that. We talk about community all the time, and this is just such a great way to like really feel that and feel connected to it. And we hope that that's kind of what it brings to you in addition to kind of the feelings of support and maybe a little inspiration or like wind in your sails if you're feeling a little burnt out going into the academic year. So um, I'm also going to drop my email in the chat. You're always welcome to send me any questions you have. Um once the applications close, we'll take about a week and a half or two weeks to review the applications and then notify you. I believe it's August. Uh, this is on the application. I should just open it up and look at it. Um, uh, yeah, late August, we will notify you. And then we'll, as a group, determine the date for that kind of group kickoff norm setting meeting together. Um, so yeah, with that, thank you so very much panelists for joining us. Um, there's also some, there's a number of folks who have participated in the program multiple years in a row with new partners uh, each time. So that's always probably a good testament to, to what this program brings. And also panelists, if you would like to participate again next year, you are more than welcome to do so. All right. Well, have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining. See you later.